Okay, so now that we've gone through different attacks against AI and using AI to actually generate attacks, we want to now have a look at AI and digital defenses. So we want to enable cybersecurity teams to actually be more efficient and augment their teams with AI capabilities to be able to increase their skills and their coverage and, and speed to response. Okay, so the first one we're going to look at is identifying vulnerabilities within your environment or within your application code. So if, we, um, if we're talking about your developers, so not just your security team, but um, you know, some of the wider business units that your security team for many, many years has been trying to get to follow uh, secure coding standards and practices, um, this is where we can start to help them and even potentially build some of this into DevOps pipelines to be able to automatically do some LLM based code vul vulnerability analysis on their applications. Okay, so <clears throat> we've got um, a few uh, prompts set up here. So you can see here code vulnerability analysis. We've got a number of files that we've created. So there's a database query um, PHP file, um, which I can tell you right now is vulnerable. Um, we've also got uh, a prompt to be able to, so this is a prompt to be able to send into um, ChatGPT to tell it the rules and what you want it to do. So, or any LLM. Um, in this case, we're using ChatGPT. So, uh, in the web interface, we can, um, of ChatGPT, we can actually upload files. So we'll grab that database query file and we'll upload that to the interface. We then put in our, what we actually want to do. So we're instructing ChatGPT what to do. Does the code in the submitted file have any vulnerabilities? Ignore previously reported vulnerabilities, um, just so that if there's any in the previous chat, um, it doesn't assume that they're still there. So again, those hallucinations. Um, for each vulnerability, respond in the following format with bold titles. If not vulnerable, respond saying no vulnerabilities, great work. Don't include descriptions to keep the result brief and clean. So you can generate this uh, in iterations just by you know, working with you know, submitting things to your LLM and just tuning um, your, your prompt. So you can see here vulnerability name, vulnerability summary. You can say one sentence description of what the vulnerability is. Vulnerable code, the vulnerable code goes here. So again, we're just instructing it in English what to do. Vulnerability fix, secure code goes here. And then some penetration test sample requests. So HTTP requests as a curl command with test strings going here in separate code blocks with brief bold titles. So you can see here that the prompt actually doesn't have don't, doesn't know anything about the code that's being submitted. It's just asking the LLM to actually go and do that analysis for us of the code, and then be able to respond with anything that it finds. So you can see here very quickly, uh, it comes back saying in the format that we asked. So SQL injection, vulnerability summary. The code directly includes the user input in the SQL query, allowing SQL injection attacks. So you can see here, this is the pulling in the, the input from the user and just putting that straight into the SQL query. And that's how SQL injection occurs. So we then asked it to give us a fix for the code. So you can see it's then changed it to what's called a prepared statement. Um, where it uses a placeholder and then securely replaces that placeholder with the value and then runs the, st runs the prepared statement securely. And that prevents the SQL injection. So you can actually literally copy and paste that code um, over that vulnerable line and that will actually fix the vulnerability. Um, keep in mind that not all code generated by LLM and quite a bit of code uh, generated by LLMs um, is not perfect. Um, it will uh, quite possibly give you bugs um, when you actually run it. So you've still got to get your humans to review it and test it and make sure it's 
working and doing rather than just blindly copying and pasting code in. Um, we've done uh, very in-depth tests across a whole range of different uh, LLMs, both open source and commercial, and I can tell you that a, a large portion of them are horrendous um, at generating um, code, both from hallucinations as well as the, the code with bugs, and even just random characters or binary characters being returned in the responses. So you definitely need to test that, you tune your, um, tune your prompt and also select the right LLM that's getting you the best results um, for what you're trying to do. Um, <clears throat> the other thing to take into account here is obviously data leakage, sending your code into an LLM um, and just understanding whether that LLM is going to be using the data that you send it, so the source code file for example, to then train on its next version of the data of the LLM. So you, what you don't want is to have, you know, your your source code or your API keys being leaked in the next version of the trained data uh, or the LLM that people can then just query later on. So you might want to consider if you, um, you know, want a high security environment that you actually run some of those LLMs um, on your own system. So if you're using uh, open source LLMs, for example, you can run those internally and that way you've got full control uh, over where that data is going or else just make sure that, you know, you provide it um, for your online uh, LLM service, uh, you know, is has options um, to prevent the data that you submit to it um, being used in, in their training data. So some of it can be a bit deceptive. They say, no, we don't include your training data without, uh, we'll use your data without consent. However, when you sign up to the service, if you read the 10 pages of terms and conditions, it says you consent to us training on your data. So just a few things to take into account. Um, and then you can see the last part here is penetration to sample requests. So injection to remove, uh, retrieve more data so that you can see a traditional sort of SQL injection attack to, or a one equals one request. And then injection to delete a table. Um, so obviously be careful running that one. Um, okay, so that's all fine to be able to do that through the web interface um, of ChatGPT. It's very different to be able to... So, we can run this code vulnerability analysis from the command line for integrating into things like your DevOps pipelines. So if we run this command, you can see this database query.php, which is our source code that we're uploading. Um, we're also passing in the prompt file. So these are the instructions that we're passing to ChatGPT for how we want to analyze the file and the output format. So you can see in here, the response that we get is similar to what we get in a web interface. So SQL injection, you can see the vulnerable line. You can see the solution here on how to fix the code, as well as some penetration testing sample requests for actually testing out things like SQL injection.